Hello everyone, welcome to another week in our garden. Now it's April, we're getting April showers, some quite a bit heavy with hail and all sorts. So we're, we're progressing slowly through the jobs, we are catching up, I think we're running maybe three weeks behind in the season but the plants will soon catch up once the weather picks up a little. It is a lot warmer but wet. Now today we're going to finish putting the potatoes in. I have put most in, I've just one line of desiree to put in and we run out of room a little bit on that side of the garden so we're going to put them in along this path side. Plenty of room for them. The soil was manured well last year so they should be all right. So we'll get these put in we're doing it a little bit different because the ground is so wet and I can't get into the ground so I'm doing them by digging little pits and putting the potatoes in and then backfilling and then when they're coming up we'll put the fertilizers on top and then ridge up okay now when we normally plant the potatoes we dig a trench five or six inches deep put some manure in the bottom then put the potatoes straight onto the manure about two foot apart and then 30 inch between the rows now with the soil being so wet underneath this year I'm doing it in little pits I'll show you how I'm doing it and then I'm covering those up and then I'll ridge afterwards when they're coming through now here's the little pit that I've dug I've dug them all the way down Here's the potato, these are main crops, plenty of spruts, so there's another sprut there so we'll rub that one off and that one there look, that'll be plenty then for that, make quite a few potatoes. The, the more sprouts you leave on the smaller the potato but more of them. So you've got to get the balance between the two. We don't want one or two spruts, or she'll go to get a small number of very large potatoes. I think that'll give us a, a nice, nice amount of potatoes to, to lift. So I put them in, rows end up, down the row, and then we'll backfill. I just brush them off as I go. Not a lot, I'll just show you this one, look, it's got loads, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's far too many, there'll be a lot of small ones, and the desiree come quite big, so let's rub the two smallest one off, and then we'll let that go. Now that's the potatoes all in the holes. I'll just take that line out for a moment. I'll just show you this. As you can see, there's, if you go below, there's no chance with this soil. It's just too, it would never break. In fact, you could make pots out of that, not if you wanted, but that, to disturb it would causes more problems. Now I have loosened the top with this rake, I've been coming down every day and raking through it to break the top and dry it out. So if I rake the top in and then bring the fillings across. Okay, still a bit lumpy but it'll be fine. There's no chance it won't break. So we'll just fill up best we can and then rake down. One more and then I'll get them all done. Now they're not so deep as normal 
but if you think once I put the ridge on top there'll be plenty of coverage on them I'll just have to keep raking that until we can break it down right I'll just finish off now and then I'll show you this row complete right now that's that line in I have covered them up and remember they're not too deep so they won't be long coming up we'll just go over where we planted them yesterday and I'll show you what maintenance we do to the ground while the potatoes are coming up okay now this is the plot we put the potatoes in yesterday Diane and I planted them between showers now the canes represent where the rows are and when we come to ridge them up and the soil is drying out it will set pretty hard so you have to go between and loosen the soil cultivate the soil between the rows so we can ridge them up later we'll go further up and then I'll show you how we do it now I'll just show you what I do to cultivate between the rows so when we come to ridge up it'd be a lot easier now between the rows canes represent where the potatoes are if you try to ridge this up when it's dry it'll be almost impossible so what we have to do is keep I use this rake and just keep raking it through every day if I can or whenever I'm down here and keep this soil loose if you see it breaks better with this than doing it with the spade or the fork just it's what you call keep messing it about if you go lightly at the top you'll break the lumps because every time you move the lumps you knock a bit off it it's a waste of time trying to break every one up but just between the rows and once you see the potatoes coming up you can keep between the rows then because you'll see the potatoes, it won't be long. Now that's a little section done to show you how I will look after the inter row of the potatoes so it'll be easier later on before we ridge up do the final ridging up of the potatoes that's when we put the fertilizer between the rows and then ridge them but as you can see it takes a time or two to get it down and this is where this is what i call the long handle bent fork and this way it comes into its own Especially if you've had a shower of rain and you're on this hard clay soil it does break down very very quickly but keep at it and you'll get it down if you're on the sandy lands just as much because you will need it loose for when you come to ridge up now I'll finish this later obviously so it's quite a long job and in the tunnel there we've still got about three calibres to plant so we'll do that this is the fourth tunnel we took the cover off just for a few moments just to show you uh, I just have three calibres to put in to make this into ten I did hold them for a little while because it was raining now we've come back we need to get them planted here they are they're a bit battered because they've been in these pots for quite a while these leaves you must take off because they'll come off anyway and they don't want them rotting in the tunnel I just put them there for a moment and there's the calibres we'll put them about 18 apart as you can see the soil is well prepared it's very very wet below dry on top wet below but that'll help them settle in nicely so make a nice hole for them well rooted you see bit on the dry side because we haven't watered them this morning but we'll give them a drink now 
level your bottom, put it in, and then loosen round. If you loosen it round like that, and then give it a good press. Like to be nice and firm. Remember when that's a big plant, it'll want anchoring down. I'll just pop these other two in, one here and one over there, and then we'll give them a drink, and we'll try and put some slug pellets on. Same way, look, these leaves, they're not doing any good now, so take those off. Try not to leave them in the tunnel, make sure you take them away. And then, in case, make the bottom nice and level, so there's not a hair, an air pocket down there. Press that well in, and then cut round. All the brassicas and planted like this, nice and fair. Press it down tight, and then tidy up. They say it's a bit lumpy, but they will come out next time. One more, clean it off the same. Just take those leaves off, we don't want them. Make sure they're not in the tunnel then. Now this one's got a bent stem up there. Oops. This one's got a bent stem, so we'll try and plant it so this will straighten itself up. Plenty deep, nice level bottom up, then it'll, it'll sit in there a bit better. Make sure that's straight. Same again, round we go. Just loosening. And then press it in nice and tight. And then tidy round. Now, when I planted this tunnel up, I interplanted with a few lettuce and I didn't put the slug pellets on because I wanted to film them going on. And already there's one or two holes appearing in the lettuce and a couple have been actually bitten off. So I'll just show you how I put my slug pellets on. These are the slug pellets we're using. These are the ones that came from gardening, gardening naturally. They're recommended by the Organ Organic Farming and Growers Institute, so they're good. We always use these. Here's the pellets. Now, I've seen people who get a handful and just scatter them through the plants. That's not the way to do it. You need to do them around your plants. You see, don't want these on your plants at all, you want to eat plants. So if you put them round, it makes a better job. You, see, you know that slugs are going to come along here. So, that's what we do, look. you see? and work your way down one side and back up the other one. I'll just finish this now and then I'll show you when it's finished as we cover up. Now that's this tunnel with its slug pellets on. Now these particular slug pellets, these light blue ones, or green as you like to call them, you don't get the mass of the slugs on the surface, the slugs actually go underground before they die, so you don't get too much mess with them. That's the fourth tunnel with the new plants with some of the slug pellets around. Now there's this other cabbage tunnel behind me that needs doing so I'll make sure that's done today and then that's all the tunnels settled. Don't like opening the tunnels up, although it's early season, so we can, but once we get into the season, I don't want to be lifting this mess up. Now, we've got the broad beans coming up nicely. They are touching the top of those covers, so we're gonna take the covers off today. 
and then chant it with the pigeons I think. Now we were just off to do the broad beans and remembered I hadn't watered these calibrisi so I'll do that before we go up. I can do it through the net, it's fine. You see I can water them all through the net. Just puddle them in. I'll do that one. Now we're at the broad beans. They're growing very well. They look a little bit a little bit light green but I think that's this weather we've had scorching sunshine and then hailstones so I think they'll get over that all right I will give them a drink with some Epsom salts in later in the day see if that'll green them up a bit more so we're going to take these covers off and put them at the side so there's a bit more freedom for them. If they start to blow about, then obviously I'll cane them. As you can see, there's plenty of flowers coming on them, but they are a little bit battered. So we'll give them, we'll give them a dose of Epsom, see if we can green them up a bit. I'm going to leave these frames on this bit of garden because I want to put a row of dwarf peas in. Then we'll put the frame for the climbing peas next to it so that hopefully we'll get a quick crop out of them. And the wind's getting up now and it's turning quite cold so we've gone from sunshine at the bottom of the garden to quite cold halfway up. Now we've got one or two cauliflowers one cut in. This, these are the two cauliflowers that we've got left. We really need them out now. They're a little bit on the small side, but I'm going to cut them and take them up. Now we've taken the other cauliflowers that were beyond this frame. They were a little bit more in the sunshine and they're beginning to stretch a little bit. So we took those a little bit early and they've now been eaten. So there's just these two left. And we need the room, so we'll harvest them today. So we just cut the tops and see what we've got. Sharp knife, so just be careful. And this, with all college, you just go around the top and square them off. Don't leave the mess on the floor though. That's a nice little cauliflower look. I'll just take the other one. This is last year's old brassica bed, don't forget. So. It'll be this year's squashes and pumpkin men. But I'm afraid these poor things are in the way. I will just take that off. That we can take those. Cut that one. Cut that one. They cut better than the pull actually, so there you go. Cut that bit so you can see. There you go. Nice pair of cauliflowers. They're yellowing a little bit with the sunshine as you can see, but that's fine. They'll they'll eat well. That's today's dinner taken care of. <laughs> Cauliflower cheese, beautiful. Now just as we're passing behind the shed. I'll just show you the Morello cherry that's in full blossom now. Beautiful. And that's facing north and it's doing rather well. Hopefully we'll have some cherries this year. We're at the top of the garden near the studio and this is where I've placed the two potato boxes this year. It's nice and sunny just here and it's out the wind a little. When we had the hot weather I had to bring them out the greenhouse, it's getting far too hot. But as you see they're ready for a little top up so I've brought some compost up and I'll start putting it round them. 
just normal compost, nothing special. And we will put some potato feed as well in there with them. But all we're doing is just following the roots. Uh, all we're doing is just following the tops up. Don't bury them too much. Then they'll keep growing with the more leaves showing, they'll grow better. Here we are, that's that one. And this one, I'll tip this in and then just spread it about. And so I don't want to, some people fill them right to the top, but I just like to bring mine up steady with the potato, keeps them going. Now with these being outside, if it's going to get very, very cold, I should just drop a fleece over the top. Now as you can see, they're doing very, very well. I'm very pleased with those. Just got to protect them, especially the cold wind that could cut them. Hello everyone. Wet Friday today. It's been raining all morning and on the weather forecast it says it's going to rain for the next two days. So I've come into the greenhouse and doing a little bit of potting up of the pumpkins and squashes. We've got quite a few. I'll show you the potting in a moment. I've potted, I potted up quite a few at the moment and I've just a few more to do. So I'll pot those while we're in the rain. Now the old greenhouse leaks a bit so if you see odd drips coming down it's uh, it's what you call automatic watering I think. <laughs> It's ready for a new roof, I'm afraid. We'll have to look at it at the end of this season, I think. Anyway, back to today. I'm going to pot some of the spinning gourds. These are from TK. As you can see, TK, they've grown very, very well. Now, I'm actually going to pot some for ourselves and some for Gemma as well and Gemma and the girls are going to make the decorations and Gemma said she might be able to use some in her floristry work for the autumn. These are the ones I potted up yesterday. Quite a few but then we've got quite an area down there to cover. Today I'm just going to pot this small pot of spinning gourds. These are from TK Blessers. They've done very, very well. So let's add them into those pots. To do them, I turn them out. I find it easier to turn them out of the pot and then break them open. And there you are, we've got one, two, three, five and six pots. So we've got a spare pot if you want it. I should just open the compost up and then carefully, because they don't really like being transplanted, the gourds and the pumpkins and the mar and squashes, so we'll just carefully lift them in. Use it by the leaf, they'll be fine. And just drop them in. And as I said, the greenhouse is self-watering, so we should be all right. Those there, that's the silver scenario that I'll get potted up and these will go into the winter baskets, you know that nice silver foliage, they'll do nicely in those, we only want about 20. Right, let's get these potted. Yeah. In they go, not. So TK, if you have problems at your end, let me know and I'll send you some because we've got plenty. There you go, look. Now I'll just write everything, because they're individual potted, I shall have to put a label in every pot, so I'll do that as we go. The compost 
this compost is now waste that goes down to either compost heap but this will probably go just thrown onto the garden everything in the greenhouse and in the garden that we've planted is coming on very very well i think the the garden side because of all the rain everything's transplanted beautifully now in the greenhouse because we've had hot days cold days wet days everything's coming into flower the geraniums are coming into flower nicely there's an odd leaf on them once taken off look and take those off at least i'm going to be able to color coordinate this year hanging baskets and pots with all the color on them if we get too much color on them i should take the flowers off and let them grow on a little these are some of the ones that we actually set from seed early on in the season and the larger ones is what we overwintered in the shed so you'd have a job to get these up and flowering within the same year so it's always best to overwinter them if you can as you can see there's quite a difference in the plants overwintered set from seed always try to keep your geraniums a little bit on the dry side if they get too wet they do tend to rot off pretty quick now next week if it stops raining it's bad to stop at some stage we'll be doing the grafting of tomatoes now if you want to grow the heritage types it's, you'll find it better if you can graft them onto a rootstock that is specially grown it's got good disease resistance and very very vigorous so you'll get a lot better plant I'll just show you this is the rootstock. It's called submarine. The tomatoes are not edible, but it's got a, a good root and good disease resistance. So if we take another tomato, this is outdoor gale, for instance, but we'll, we could graft them. We will graft them together, and we graft that onto the disease resistance of this one we should get a decent plant out of it. It'll only be a side graft. As you can see, they're ready for doing it now. As long as they don't grow too much and then we'll get them grafted over next week. We'll do, we'll do half a dozen. We'll do six and see how we get on. Now we've got the potatoes in, thank goodness. The rain will wash those in anyway, so that's good. We've got all the brassicas in. The tunnels are all full. I shall start when the weather picks up a little, putting the frame up, getting the ground prepared for the peas and beans. The onions are ready to go in. We'll maybe do that next week or probably the week after, but they are about ready now. So we'll look at that next week. So that will be about it for this week on a very wet, drippy Friday. So thank you for subscribing, many many thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you next week in the better weather. <laughs> okay, bye now.